what's up everybody? It's your girl Merle and today we are going to be doing something that I've been wanting to do for a little while now. It's a video that I get requested quite a bit. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can make your tofu look and taste like chicken. I know, I know. I feel like it's like a party trick of veteran vegans, you know what I mean? It's like we know how to work with tofu. We know how to, how to, drain and condense and marinade tofu so that it becomes something you really look forward to eating instead of something you dread. A lot of people that ask me how to start going vegan are always like, oh, but then you eat a lot of tofu, don't you? And I, I get it, because before I was even vegetarian or vegan, I never really worked tofu into my diet. But now that I know how to work with it, it's my best friend. And for those of you who are like, oh, I can't eat tofu because I have a soy allergy, I have good news. The last video I did was two different recipes for soy-free tofu. We use chickpeas and lentils, so check that video out if this one isn't your speed. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, everybody. So I'm using extra firm tofu. Obviously, I don't feel like I need to explain my reasoning to you. The firmer it is when we start, the easier it is going to be to change the texture from soft to tender. So I'm using extra firm. You could use firm if you want. Definitely don't use silken. That's probably not gonna work. The dealer's choice. So I am going to drain this tofu first. And I think a lot of people, when you're first starting out, you don't even know about draining tofu. There are plenty of ways you can do it. They have tofu presses that you can buy. Some people love those. I bought one and I never use it. So I don't think you need it. And you can use paper towels, but if you wanna be sustainable, you can use a reusable towel. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this baby up. And then what we wanna do is we want to grab something heavy enough that we can put on top to help to press the liquid out because tofu is full of water. So that's the purpose of draining is to remove the water. And if we remove the water, we can have a better chance at getting the texture that we want from our tofu. And also it'll help the tofu to absorb our marinade and other flavors better. Tip number one for newbie tofu people, drain your tofu. I'm gonna let this sit for about 20 to 30 minutes. Then we'll move on to our next step. All right, so our tofu is officially pressed. So we're gonna go ahead and unwrap that. But wait, there's more. We're not gonna stop there. We really wanna get the moisture out of there. So we're gonna go the next extra mile and we're gonna take the container we got it in just to reuse our packaging. And we're gonna place our tofu in there. Then we wanna wrap this up with some reusable wrap, or you could also use a reusable resealable bag. And we're gonna place that in the freezer for about six hours to overnight. This is really gonna help to get the any last lingering water out of there. I know it feels like a long time to wait, but what you can do is just get a bunch of blocks of tofu going all at once so they're ready to go and take out of the freezer when you need them because they can stay in the freezer for quite a while. All right, so we've got our frozen tofu here. It's gonna look like this. It's gonna look kind of yellow now, so don't be like scared. That's okay, that's correct. And so now we're gonna take it and we're gonna put it on a microwave safe bowl and I've got another clean dish towel here and I'm gonna allow that to defrost for about 10 to 15 minutes. All right, so our tofu is done defrosting and now we have yet one last. Ow, that's hot. We have one last thing to do. We're gonna press one more time. I know, it's a lot, a lot of pressing. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but we basically want this to reduce in its size by about 50%. So just trust me, it's for a good reason. It's not just for fun or to be annoying, but while we're waiting, we're gonna mix together our marinade. So first, I got this cute little bowl. I got a little goodie box full of goods from Binging with Babish, thank you so much. These little stainless steel bowls. The iconic mini whisk. Let's start by adding in some unsweetened plant-based milk. I am using oat milk, cause I'm an oat milk stan. Some low sodium soy sauce, apple cider vinegar, some canola or vegetable oil, basically just any neutral oil. Nutritional yeast, AKA nooch. Garlic powder, onion powder, some ground mustard. You can also use just plain old mustard, mustard? Mustard in liquid form if you want to. Some hot sauce. If you don't want it to be spicy, you don't have to use this at all. I like some heat and some spice, so feel free to give or take whatever you want. Speaking of heat, I've got some smoked paprika. 
which will add a nice, more of a smoky flavor to our tofu. And then finally, salt and pepper. Now I'm gonna mix that all up. Okay, so we've finished pressing for the second time and now we're gonna unwrap our tofu. So it officially looks like tofu with a little bit of an identity crisis, which is exactly what we want. And we're just gonna go ahead and rip pieces of it off like this. And you can already see it has way more of a flaky texture to it on the inside, which is great and exactly what we want. So we're gonna take these pieces and we're gonna drop them right into our marinade. Now we're just gonna stir that up and so all of our little tofu bites are equally coated in the marinade and we're gonna leave this to marinate for about 30 minutes. There are a couple different ways that you can go about baking these. A lot of people like to go the hot oil route with like breadcrumbs and everything like that and that's great. I've had chicken, like popcorn chicken like that before, delicious. Personally, I hate working with hot oil. I hate it. I'm scared of it. I don't like any part of the process. I don't like the cleanup. I don't like the actual deep frying. I don't like any of it. So today we're gonna be doing one where we actually bake these instead. If you all decide that you'd like to see a deep fried like popcorn KFC chicken recipe, let me know and I will do it for you. For this one, we're gonna be baking it. And honestly, that's what I'd most likely do on a night to night basis. Here we've got some cornstarch some garlic powder, smoked paprika again, and some salt and pepper. One more time, we're gonna mix that up. Then we're gonna take our chicken that we have here that's been marinating, and I'm just gonna take them out and pop them into our cornstarch mixture. Then we're just going to mix that all together so that our little tofu bites are evenly coated in the cornstarch. I'm noticing that mine still look quite a bit wet. I'm just transferring them over to a baking sheet with some aluminum foil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sprinkle these with a little bit of all-purpose flour just to dry them out a little bit before we pop them in the oven. Make sure they have plenty of space on here. And now we bake. I'm not gonna lie, I took a little sneak peek and they look so good. They look so good. Oh my Lord. Like. I know I'm good, but like, I'm good. Look at these. Look at these crispy little baddies. Hell yeah. They're looking all chickeny and stuff. You are so beautiful to me. They smell really good too. You know, if you want at this point, you can just sprinkle some salt over the top. If that's how you feel. You know what, I'll have it with a little bit of mustard. I'm gonna have it with a little bit of mustard. That's not mustard. I'm having that with a little bit of buffalo sauce, cause why not? You could totally coat these in buffalo sauce or you could coat them in like teriyaki sauce. You could do all kinds of stuff with these. Sweet and sour, you name it. All right, let's see here. Let's give this a little taste. That is so good. Oh my God. It's not right how good that is. Wow, 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 wow. These crisped up so beautifully. My mind is blown. I mean, look at this. Do you see this? Are you seeing this? I don't know if you're seeing this. All right, well, that was a valiant success. I'm super happy about it. I hope you guys try it. Please, if you do, tag me on Instagram or on TikTok, wherever you do, or here on YouTube. Wherever you are, however you feel about it, let me know. I'm excited to hear your thoughts. In the meantime, send me any other recipes you'd like to see from me. Before we go, let's talk about our sponsor for this video, ExpressVPN. I use ExpressVPN on my phone and my laptop. One major benefit to using ExpressVPN is that it prevents targeted ads from popping up when you're online. That's because your internet providers, whether it's AT&T or Verizon or whoever, can see every single website you visit. Yes even the ones you visit in incognito mode, and sell your browsing data to advertisers. It gets embarrassing having my coworkers see ads for solar powered vibrators when I'm at work. Sheesh. ExpressVPN reroutes and encrypts 100% of my network traffic, so nobody can see what I'm looking at. The protection is one thing. I also love that you can expand your streaming library exponentially when you have ExpressVPN. For example, 
I can watch movies and shows that aren't available in the US on Hulu and Netflix. Streaming services have tons of different shows and movies in every country. AKA, I can go back to watching The Office for the 19th time or change my location to the UK and watch every single Studio Ghibli movie and live my life to the fullest. What I'm saying is you can expand your streaming library significantly. The way that it works is you just press the button on whichever device you choose and you're connected. It's done, that's it, it's that easy. Find out how you can get three months free by going to expressvpn.com slash Merle or by clicking the link in the description box. Thanks again, ExpressVPN, and have a beautiful day, everyone.